I consider Arnold not Arnold. I consider him bodybuilding. Arnold is bodybuilding to me, to everyone else. The fourth contestant, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It can be boring. And so what you do is you create a certain excitement. And that's what you think about you think. Every legacy is different, but every legacy can be great. My dream was to leave a mark in bodybuilding, to become a champion who would always be remembered. It took sweat, sacrifice, and pain, but ultimately, it led to triumph. Your dream may be different, but I can show you the blueprint to a physique that you never thought was possible. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. I created my legacy. It's time to leave yours. If there's a bomb exploding around you, you do not lose your concentration. I, cert I believe very much that bodybuilding is more mental than physical. The biggest name in competitive bodybuilding is Arnold Schwarzenegger, the current and defending champion of Mr. Olympia. 28 years old, 6 foot 2, 240 pounds, Arnold has held the title for the past five consecutive years. In addition to being Mr. Universe, the most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. To have that vision that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, you have to have a goal. Now, it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time, and start thinking about why do you want to work out? And then it can't be as crazy as it is. It, it could be, uh, you know, I want to impress girls. If that's your goal, so be it, but it motivates you. It could be that you're emulating a certain, uh, you know, bodybuilder. Have those pictures put all over the wall like I did when I was a kid. So that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. This is why I always smiled when I was in the gym. People always came up to me and said, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. It's getting closer and closer. Incredible satisfaction. I remember that when I weighed 245 pounds and Bob Rafelson, the director of Stay Hungry, said to me that I'm interested in having you in a movie. And then he said, but I don't want you to weigh more than 210 pounds. So I said, well, it's funny you come to me and you want me to be in a movie, but I'm weighing 245, 246. But he demanded that. And he says, look, it's very simple. On the day we start shooting, he says, I'm going to put you on a scale. And if you don't make the 210, you're out. I worked on it. I started visualizing myself very clearly as a lean athlete. Because that's the only way I could lose that weight and all of a sudden get interested in running more. Because up until that point, I ran like three miles after training or before training or whatever. But now all of a sudden, it was five miles, six miles, seven miles, eight miles in order to lose the weight. And I did everything with high reps. And I was watching my diet, what I eat, and all those kind of things. And the day before, with Bob Rafus, he says, let's step on the scale. And I stepped on the scale, and I weighed 209. Yeah, that's special. So it just shows you what is possible if you visualize exactly what you want to look like. So it can go one way, which is that you can lose weight and get trim and get slim and everything, get the abs out and all this, or you go the other way and you gain weight because you see yourself big and you see yourself as a winner of a Mr. Olympia or something like that. I knew all along that it doesn't matter if I go down to 200 or to 160 pounds. Because if I make my mind up, it doesn't matter how much weight it is. 
Well, to me, is is what are you more hungry for? Am I more hungry to be Mr. Olympia? Or do, am I more hungry to eat like everyone else out there and therefore look like everyone else? You know, to me, I was more hungry than Mr. Olympia. And I was more hungry and more interested, more excited about the fact of becoming a champion and being ripped on stage and being cut and winning the trophy and all those kind of things. Because I knew that if I would just, you know, have a temporary joy here and eat and cheat, I am most likely not going to make it. But someone else is going to walk right by me and someone else is going to grab the title. Because many times these competitions were very, very close. And I remember, especially in 1980, where it was just two points. And, uh, you know, any mistake could have cost me the title. So this is not a mistake that I want to make. I want to be responsible that I do everything that I can to be a winner. In my days, we and, were not as sophisticated when it comes to dieting, uh, and we didn't have the food the supplements that are available today with getting definition and you know cutting down and all those things. We had food supplements that were really good for gaining weight, but we didn't really have much available to lose weight. So to me, my way of really getting defined and getting kind of a really mature definition rather than just